you were a, a lead guitarist in a metal band. Oh, <laughs> did I write that down for something? Uh, what <laughs> did you? Uh, what'd you do it for? The, the, uh, the, the performing was it the the pure the the music of it? Was it just being a rock star? Why why'd you do it? Um, so we only ever played two gigs. We, we we didn't last, you know, it wasn't a very, we weren't famous or anything like that. Yeah. Um, but I, I I was very into metal. Like it was my entire identity, mm -hmm. sort of from the age uh, of 16 to 23. What's the best metal band of all time? Oh, it's, don't ask me that. It's so hard to answer. Uh, uh. So I, I know I had a long argument with, um, so I'm, I'm a guitarist, more like a classic rock guitarist. Mm. So, you know, I've had friends who are very big Pantera fans. And so um, there was often arguments about um, what's the better metal band, Metallica versus Pantera. This is a more kind of 90s maybe discussion. Um, but I was always on the side of Metallica, both musically and in terms of performance and the, the depth of war, uh, lyrics yes. and, and so yes. on. So, um, but they were, basically everybody was against me because if you're a true metal fan, I guess the idea goes is you can't possibly be a Metallica fan. I think Metallica is pop. It's, it's like it's they sold out. Uh, Metallica you know. are metal. Like they they were the. I mean, again, you can't say who was the godfather of metal, blah blah blah. But like they were so groundbreaking and so brilliant. Um, I, I mean, you've named literally two of my favorite bands. Like that's that when you ask that question, who are my favorites? Like those, those were are two that came up. A third one is Children of Bodom. Um, who I just think, oh, they just tick all the boxes for me. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's it, it, nowadays, like I kind of sort of feel like a repulsion to the. I I, meant, I I was that myself. Like I'd be like, who do you prefer more? Come on, who's like? No, yeah. you have to rank them. But it's like this false zero sumness. That's like wh why they're so additive. Like there's no conflict there. Although um, but, I, I, when people ask that kind of question about anything, movies. I feel like it's hard work and it's unfair, but it's, it's, you should it's, pick one. Yeah. Like, and I, that's actually, you know, the same kind of, yeah. it's like a fear of a commitment. When right. People ask me, what's your favorite band? It's like, but I, you know, it's good to pick. Exactly. And thank you for, yeah. Thank you for the tough question. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, maybe not in, no, in, no, in it's, a context no, when a lot of people are listening. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah. That's just like, what? Why does this matter? Uh, no, it, it does. It, it, are you still into metal? Uh, funny enough, I was listening to a bunch before I came over here. Um, oh, like you? Do you use it for like motivation? Yeah, or get this, you into certain. Yeah, movies? I was weirdly listening to eighties hair metal before I came. Does that count hair as metal? I th I think so. Okay. It's it's like proto metal, and it's happy. It's optimistic, happy proto metal. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean these things, you know, all these genres bleed into each other. Um, but yeah, sorry to answer your question about guitar playing. My relationship with it was kind of weird in that I was deeply uncreative um my objective would be to hear some really hard technical solo and then learn it memorize it and then play it perfectly but i was incapable of trying to write my own music like the idea was just absolutely terrifying um uh but i was just also just thinking i was like it'd be kind of cool to actually try starting a band again and getting back into it and write but i it's scary it's scary. I mean, I, I put out some guitar playing, just other people's covers. Like I play comfortably numb on on the internet. Nice. And it's scary too. It's scary putting stuff out there. Uh, and I, I had this similar kind of fascination with technical playing, both on piano and guitar. You know, uh, one of the first, um, one of the reasons that I started learning guitar is the from Ozzy Osbourne, Mr. Crowley's solo. Mm. And one of the first solos I learned is that, um, and it's there's a beauty to it. There's a melodic beauty tapping, to it. Tapping, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's some tapping, but it's it's just really fast. It's beautiful, it's, like arpeggios. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's arpeggios. Yeah, and but there's a melody that you can hear through it. But there's also a build up, mm. and it's, it's a beautiful solo. But it's also technically just visually the way it looks. When a person watches, you feel like a rock star playing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it, it ultimately has to do with technical. You, you, you're not developing the part of your brain that I think requires you to generate beautiful music. Mm. It is ultimately technical in nature. And so that took me a long time to let go of that and just be able to write music myself. And, and that's a different... 
that's a different journey, I think. Mm. Um, I think that journey is a little bit more inspired in the blues world, for example, or improvisation is more valued, obviously in jazz and so on. But um, I, I think ultimately it's a more rewarding journey because you get to, your relationship with the guitar then becomes a kind of escape from the mm. world where you can create, create. I mean, creating stuff is, um, and it's something you work with because my relationship with my guitar was like it was something to tame and defeat. <laughs> yeah, it's a which challenge. Was, which was kind of what my whole personality was back then. Like I was just very like, uh, you know, as I said, like very competitive, very just like must you know, bend this thing to my will. Yeah. Whereas writing music is you work, it's like a dance. Yeah. You work with it. Yeah. But I think because of the competitive aspect, for me at least, that's still there, which creates anxiety about, uh, playing publicly or all that kind of stuff. I think that there's just like a harsh self-criticism within the whole mm. thing. It's really, really, it's, it's, it's really tough. I wanna hear some of your stuff. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that it, there's, it, the, there's certain things that feel really personal. And, and on top of that, as we talked about poker uh, offline, there's certain things that you get to a certain height in your life, and that doesn't have to be very high, but you get to a certain height and then you put it aside for a bit and it's hard to return to it because you remember being good. Mm. And it's hard to, um, like you being at, at a very high level in poker, it might be hard for you to return to poker every once in a while and enjoy it, knowing that you're just not as sharp as it mm. used to be because you're not doing it every single day. Uh, that That's something I always wonder with, I mean, even just like in chess with Kasparov, some of these greats just returning to it. It's just, it's almost painful. Yes, I can, yeah. And I feel that way with guitar too, you know, because I used to, play like every day a lot. And so returning to it is, is painful because like, it's like accepting the fact that this whole ride is finite and that you have you have a prime. You, there, there's a yes. time when you're really good and now it's over and now- We're on a different chapter of life. Yeah. It's like, oh, but I, I miss that, yeah. But, but you, can still, you can still discover joy within that process. I'm, it's, it's been tough, especially with some level of like, as people get to know you, there's a, and people film stuff, you, you, you don't have the privacy of just sharing something with a few people around you. Yeah. That's a beautiful privacy that- That's it's, a good with, point. With the internet, it's just it's disappearing. Yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah. But all those pressures aside, if you really, you can step up and still enjoy the fuck out of uh, a good musical performance. 